Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, Dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque. Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz. Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us prepare ourselves to celebrate the mysteries of God's love. Let us acknowledge our sins and let us entrust ourselves to God's merciful love. Lord Jesus, you give us new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as we celebrate in mystery the solemnities of your Son's resurrection, so too we may be worthy to rejoice at his coming with all the saints through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Paul's escorts had taken him to Athens, they came away with instructions for Silas and Timothy to join him as soon as possible. Then Paul stood up at the Areopagus and said, You Athenians, I see that in every respect you are very religious. 
for as I walked around looking carefully at your shrines, I even discovered an altar inscribed to an unknown God. What therefore you unknowingly worship, I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and all that is in it, the Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in sanctuaries made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands because he needs anything. Rather, it is he who gives to everyone life and breath and everything. He made from one the whole human race to dwell on the entire surface of the earth, and he fixed the ordered seasons and the boundaries of their regions, so that people might seek God, even perhaps grope for Him and find Him. For indeed, He is not far from any one of us. For in Him we live and move and have our being. As even some of your poets have said, for we too are His offspring. Since therefore we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divinity is like an image fashioned from gold, silver, or stone by human art and imagination. God has overlooked the times of ignorance, but now He demands that all people everywhere repent because He has established a day on which he will judge the world with justice through a man he has appointed. And he has provided confirmation for all by raising him from the dead. When they heard about resurrection of the dead, some began to scoff, but others said, We should like to hear you on this some other time. And so Paul left them, but some did join him and became believers. Among them were Dionysus, a member of the court of the Areopagus, a woman named Damaris, and others with them. After this, he left Athens and went to Corinth. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Praise Him, all you His angels. Praise Him, all you His host. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Let the kings of the earth and all peoples, the princes and all the judges of the earth, Young men too, and maidens, old men and boys. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. He has lifted up the horn of his people. Be this his praise from all his faithful ones from the children of Israel, the people close to him. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. I will ask the Father, and He will give you another Advocate to be with you always.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the Spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears and will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, in our gospel today, Jesus continues to talk about the Holy Spirit. And today, Jesus introduces the Holy Spirit as the Spirit of of truth, Espiritu ng Katotohanan. He is the Spirit of truth because according to Jesus, He will guide us to all truth. He is the Spirit of truth because He will speak the words of Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Truth. The Holy Spirit does not tell lies. The Holy Spirit does not deceive. The Holy Spirit speaks the truth of Jesus. In our first reading today, St. Paul reaches Athens in Greece and he preaches in the Areopagus. And we could sense from the words of Paul how filled he was with the Holy Spirit as he preaches the truth about the true God and about Jesus Christ. Puspos ng Espiritu Santo si Pablo, kaya ipinahayag niya ang katotohanan tungkol sa tunay na Diyos at tungkol kay Jesus na tagapagligtas. But despite the powerful preaching of St. Paul, according to our first reading, very few believed in him. Many sneered at him because they could not accept his teachings. Many rejected him. Many said, we will listen to you about this later. They delayed their interest in what Paul was telling them. But take note, my dear brothers and sisters, St. Paul did not try to twist the truth so that his listeners would accept him. Minsan kasi ganyan tayo, para tayo tanggapin, para tayo paniwalaan, para tanggapin at paniwalaan ng ating mga sinasabi, binabago natin ang katotohanan. We try to manipulate the truth. We try to twist the truth so that people who listen to us may accept us and our teachings and words. But St. Paul did not do that. St. Paul did not tell lies in order to gain acceptance 
and appreciation, he simply spoke the truth. He simply told the truth about Jesus. He spoke the truth because he is filled with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth. My dear brothers and sisters, we have to accept that we are experiencing a crisis of truth. Crisis ng katotohanan. Marami na nga tayong krisis na pinagdaraanan. Kasama pa dyan ang krisis ng katotohanan. The crisis of truth. We experience the crisis of truth because nowadays, many people no longer value the truth. Hindi na pinapahalagahan ang katotohanan. Pwede nang sabihin, hindi naman mahalaga ang magsabi ng totoo. Hindi naman mahalaga ang katotohanan ng yan. Pwede namang magsinungaling. Pwede namang manloko. We no longer value the truth. We try to manipulate the truth. We try to twist the truth. And worse, we present truth as lies and lies as truth. Hindi lamang natin binabago ang katotohanan. May mga pagkakataon pa na kung ano ang totoo, yun ang palalabasing kasinungalingan. At kung ano pa ang kasinungalingan, yun pa ang palalabasing totoo. We experience a crisis of truth because nowadays the one who speaks the truth is the one persecuted. While the one who tells lies is the one praised. Crisis talaga yan. Kapag yung nagsasabi ng totoo ang pinalalabas na masama, at yung nagsasabi ng kasinungalingan ng nag, ang pinupuri at tinatanggap, napakalaking krisis na pinagdaraanan natin yan. We experience a crisis of truth because nowadays, we no longer know what really is the truth because many people try to hide the truth. Inililihim, itinatago, ang katotohanan. My dear brothers and sisters, one who speaks the truth, one who tells the truth, shows that he possesses the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth. Kapag nagsasalita ka palagi ng katotohanan, Kapag yung totoo lamang palagi ang sinasabi mo, ibig sabihin niyan, nasa sa iyo ang Espiritu Santo, sapagkat ang Espiritu Santo ay Espiritu ng katotohanan. But one who always tells lies also shows that that person possesses the spirit not of truth, but the spirit of lies. And remember that the father of all lies is Satan, the evil one. Kapag puro na lang pagsisinungaling, kapag puro na lang panloloko, ipinapakita rin anong espiritu ang nasa sa kanya. Espiritu ng kasinungalingan. At ang ama ng lahat ng kasinungalingan ay si Satanas. But my dear brothers and sisters, we are not temples of Satan. We are not temples of the evil spirit. We are temples of the Holy Spirit. We were created by God. We were given the breath of God, which is the Spirit. And that Holy Spirit dwells within us. This is the Spirit 
of truth. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, today and every day, please always tell the truth. Huwag magsisinungaling. Sabihin lagi ang katotohanan. Let us speak the truth. Let us stand by the truth. Let us fight for the truth. And let us live in the truth. Our Heavenly Father has not left us orphans. He has sent us His Holy Spirit. Let us make our common prayer in the power of the Spirit of Truth. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Church may be zealous in bringing the message of Jesus to all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who govern and exercise authority may bring peace and justice to nations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That through our acts of kindness, the despised, the rejected, or unloved in our society may experience God's care in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick and those who suffer may see and feel God's loving presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have gone before us in death may be raised to the life of the risen Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray in silence for our personal petitions. Let us remember the people who need our prayers and the intentions offered in this Mass. Lord, grant that the Holy Spirit may increasingly reveal to us the truths made known by Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, Grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, 
when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For He is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, He has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Broderick our Administrator and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us now pray to the Father as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. We invite you to our healing rosary for the world tonight at 9 o'clock. Our host, for the rosary tonight will be the diocesan shrine of Our Lady of the Abandoned in Marikina City. And we thank uh, Bishop Noli Buko, the Auxiliary Bishop of the Diocese of Antipolo, for hosting our healing rosary this Wednesday. And so we invite you to gather once again as a family, as a community, to pray the Holy Rosary, and together let us beg the intercession of our Blessed Mother. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of the risen Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, 